two members just like the process is calling for. You're still in discussion. Okay. Someone wants to move that. That can be done. Move to remove the two items from uh, from our agenda to be brought back at a later date. Second. Motion made to remove. Made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. no. Three, three. Okay. What did you come up with, Captain? Three, three. Chair, you vote to approve the point of this point. So it's a moot point again. Is that okay. correct? Unless you want to. If you vote for the motion, <coughs> the motion will pass. Okay, I vote for the motion then. I'm tired of looking at him. Uh, number seven. I'm sorry. Yeah, number seven, multifamily dwelling appendix ordinance 2142. This will be the third reading. Motion to discuss. Have to discuss. Second. Ordinance. Second. Mr. Second. Reed. I would uh, move to suspend the rules and place ordinance number 2142 on its third reading by title only. Roll call the order on this one. Well, we need a second first. Yeah, we'll need a second to discuss it first. Second. All right. Now, we'll take your motion into account. You want to roll call? Yeah. Yes. Please. Yeah, we're going to start using roll call votes almost everything from now on. There would be on that anyway. It's a uh, <coughs> suspending the rules. Thank you, Greg Patrick. Yes. <clears throat> Miss Balance. Yes. Mr. DeVito? Yes. Mr. Raphael? Yes. Mr. Pantanal? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Berry? Yes. Okay. Motion carried. To spend and read. For the third time. Do you have it? Title on. You got that title on. Yeah. Ordinance number 2142, an ordinance clarifying the qualifying legally non-conforming multifamily dwellings in R1 zoning as of the passing of this ordinance. All right. So now I guess we're going on. Mr. Vito. I move to approve ordinance number 2142 on its third reading. Second. Made and seconded. Dr. Kirkpatrick. Yes. No discussion. No. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's discussion, discussion now. Sorry. No discussion. Mr. Pano. I'll go back to my original two readings ago. How, I don't know how we're going to track these if, unless they have to have a business license of some type. Uh, I realize that that may be a moot point at this point in time, but based on the, the concerns of the, the residents on these streets and the uh, uh, I'll still get back to the off, off street, lack of adequate code off street parking required. I still believe each and every one of these, if they want to be conforming, they ought to have to meet the CUP requirement, and that uh, there there needs to be some way to enforce being able to get these off of illegally non conforming because of the 180 day rule. Uh, if they're legally non conforming. Uh, number one, they can't do any enlargements or alterations. They have to be maintained, and any failure to do so could result in a loss of the non-conforming status. Uh, parking spaces, uh, it's in the, in the zoning ordinance, these are required to have a CUP, and I see no reason since they've been identified by the uh, Planning Commission why, why they couldn't 
appropriately apply for a CUP and and be following the code as it exists instead of making a uh, blanket uh, approval. That's all I have to say. Any further? Okay. So we read it. We're going to Mr. DeVito. Well, looking at the, you know, off, off street parking, uh, you know, over half of the <laughs> units have more than adequate uh, off street parking. Uh, three of the units are one spot short. Uh, one unit is three spots <coughs> short. But overall, they either have an excess or they meet the requirements of off street parking. Um, I think it's important in the city that we have adequate housing, uh, especially rental properties. Uh, it's no unknown thing to this community that a lot of property has been converted to B&Bs, which takes up what could have been uh, apartments, uh, affordable apartments for people in the city. So I'd really hate to, to lose uh, housing in the city. I mean, that's important particularly with uh, probably the clientele that needs affordable housing. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> the reason that we can't make this list conform to parking or conform to other things in our code is because our code was written in the year 2000 and they were there before the code. I can't make them do anything. They were legal before our laws changed. What we're trying to do is just identify them so that from this point forward, if someone does uh, convert their home, we'll know about it. We'll know that that one was, was done illegally. That's the whole purpose. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. We've had a third reading. Is, is this list less 17 and a half Oak Street? It is. Okay, thank you. Okay. We vote on the third reading. Okay. We'll call vote on this one too. Mr. Berry. Yes. Mr. Pano. No. Mr. Raphael. Yes. Mr. DeVito. Yes. Ms. Balance. Yes. Dr. Kirkpatrick. Yes. Five to one in favor. Okay. Next item of business is number eight, ordinance to codify parks quarter cent tax. Motion to discuss. Motion to discuss. Second. Second. I seconded. Mr. Weaver, do you know where we're at on the ordinance? Um, you should have a short ordinance that was passed around the table a little while ago. It speaks of an attachment of the ordinance that was in the original petition. I don't believe you'll have copies of that because I could not get my computer to generate a clean copy of it. Uh, I did get uh, Bruce to bring us a copy of one of the petitions and we can make you a copy so you can see that of uh, what you would be approving. You're approving not the change, you're only, a, uh, if you pass the ordinance as drafted, it's an ordinance to uh, confirm the vote that was taken by the people uh, in 2006 and to give it a number so that it can actually be put in our series of codes uh, so that it can be located. You're not actually passing any tax or anything of that nature. You're simply providing so that we can codify what the people did when they brought the petition initiative and then voted uh, approximately two to one in favor of removing the section that sunset that particular tax. Mr. Raphael. Well, why did it take so long and why is it necessary now? I don't know that it is absolutely necessary. Uh, it's been suggested, I think, uh, uh, from Mr. Ponell's research that it ought to be. Uh, it would make it easier to be found. It does not violate uh, 
state law to not have it, I don't believe, and I believe that was the consensus that he received from, and I won't speak directly, he can speak to that, but um, it really would be best at this time. I think it was probably an oversight at that time to not really do it. It was a time period, I think, when uh, the city was in great flux because it was voted at the time of a general election when one council was coming in and one council was going out. Uh, we had changes at the mayor's office at that time, and it didn't happen. But I don't think it in any way negates the people's will uh, that they voted, as I said, two to one in favor of continuing the tax and by removing that section. It's just a cleanup issue. It's just a cleanup issue. Okay. Mr. DeVito. I'd move to assign this ordinance a number and place it on its first reading. Second. Main seconded. I don't have a copy of it. I'd like to. Oh, yes, I do. Excuse me. <coughs> just received it to see. <coughs> Might I have just a moment to read it? Yes, please. Ma <coughs> Any other discussion while she's reading this, Mr. Pano? Since uh, Mr. Weaver deferred part of the discussion to me, and, and researching this, it was just totally obvious. If you go through the code, uh, and I talked to Mr. Levine about this some time ago, all of a sudden it just stops that there's nothing to track the quarter percent sales tax that the citizens approved in the November election in 2006 and particularly because it removed the sunset clause, which I believe at the time you were having to go forward with an ordinance, what, every two years, three years, something like that to, I don't know where Bruce is, I thought he was here. He's not here. Uh, anyway, uh, there was an ordinance written every period of time that, that extended this, and when it went on the, on the ballot, and as the ordinance says, the vote was uh, 624 for and 308 against. Um, it just is a, a cleaner way, and in talking with the Municipal League, uh, it should have been immediately <coughs> any initiative that's passed by the, by the voters uh, that affects the code should have been codified, and nobody's pointing any fingers. It's just a clean-up administrative assignment. Any further? All right. Motion's been made and seconded to give it a ordinance number. And read. And read, yes. So, roll call vote on. When was that it, seconded? Yeah, it was made and seconded, yes. Mr. Pando? Yes. I think that was his vote. <laughs> Click on the trigger. Did she call my name? Yeah. yeah. Dr. Kirkpatrick? Yes. Ms. Balance? Yes. Mr. DeVito? Yes. Mr. Raphael? Yes. Mr. Berry? Yes. Grade 6 here. Thank you to the city attorney for getting this cleaned up. The ordinance number will be 2143. Okay. An ordinance confirming the adoption of the initiative ordinance approved by the electorate of the city of Eureka Springs on November 7, 2006, regarding amending ordinance number 1906 and assigning it, a, assigning it a number. Whereas an election was held on November 7, 2006, initiated by the legal voters of the city of Eureka Springs by petition regarding amending Ordinance 1906, and whereas that vote count was certified as 624 votes for passage and 308 votes against passage. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the city council of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that section 1, the unnumbered ordinance contained within the initiating petition and attached hereunto <coughs> was approved by the voters of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, on November 7, 2011. It should be 2006, yes. 2006. 
and should be assigned the following ordinance number. 2143. And be recorded by, be recorded in the city records as an approved ordinance of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Actually, it'll need the next <coughs> ordinance number. It would need the 2144. Because it will be a separate ordinance. Thank you. Okay, so just one read on that? This time? This time, okay. And I'll see that you get in your box a copy <coughs> of the petition so that you'll have the actual ordinance that was adopted by the people. I'd move to <coughs> approve ordinance number 2143 and its first reading. Second. Main second. Yeah, let's do it. Until we get, get these newbies out of the way. Mr. Pownall? Yes. Dr. Kirkpatrick? Yes. Ms. Balance? Yes. Mr. DeVito? Yes. Mr. Raphael? Yes. Mr. Barry? Yes. 6 0. Okay. I'm going to take a 10 minute break. Second. Make a second for a 10 minute break. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Ten minutes. We'll get a lot, we'll get a lot to do.